If you have questions, you can raise your hand and I'll repeat the question and then. Yes. Ash. <laughs> it is. So what uh, was like, let, me, let me repeat the question for those people um, online. The question is, how what is it like to maintain a repo that a lot of people are using, and um, how do you deal with that? Um, it, well, it goes back to my last slide and communication. Um, that ends up being probably the most difficult and most important part of what I uh, of what you of what I do with Mongoose. Like code is kind of. Uh, ends up being maybe like 50 to 75 percent of what I do is like uh, is like either writing new code or debugging old features. The rest kind of ends up being like GitHub issues get activity at a rate of maybe five or ten per day. So I need to go through all of those and sort of filter out like what is uh, what is relevant content. Like, is this uh, is this a real bug? Can I reproduce it? What's going on here? Is this maybe a new feature that I need to add? Um, how can I synthesize all of this these patterns that I'm seeing in these issues into how into like how I can improve the module? That uh, that actually ends up being probably the most challenging part and sort of related to your question about how uh, about sort of what's it like? Um, yeah, ends up being a lot of uh, answering questions on GitHub and uh, sometimes having people point out uh, every mistake that you make. There was a particularly fun one where I came up, where somebody was like, oh, there was this, uh, there's this big regression, performance regression in my code. Uh, what's going on? And he bisected, and he like it bisected it down to this one commit that I made like seven months prior. And, uh, and I just kind of had to eat some humble pie and say like, yeah, sorry, dude, I, uh, I screwed up. I apologize. Uh, that was not a really good idea. Um, not my best work. And you know, that's, that's one of the fun things about, uh, about maintaining an open source project and, um, and kind of one of the difficult, but difficult, rewarding, and sometimes embarrassing parts is everything that you do that's good is out there in the open, but also everything you do that's bad is out there in the open for, uh, for everybody to see for all time. So, it gives you just like that little extra push to make sure that your code is like top notch, 100% quality, best you can do. Yes? Question. So the question is, how often are pull requests actually helpful? So very rarely are they not helpful. Um, there, there are uh, there are occasionally things that come up with, or there are occasionally things that users come up with that are just like uh, I probably can't fit that in. I don't think that really fits with the module's vision, and that's kind of one of the hardest things for me to do is to say no to pull requests. But at the same time, with the uh, with the four point two point zero release, which was last week, I believe, or was it this week? It was last week. Um, actually, there were about six or seven new features that came just directly from pull requests, just like users were just like, I want this in Mongoose. So look, so I would end up just reviewing it and saying like, okay, it looks, uh, looks pretty reasonable. It doesn't add too much bloat to the, uh, the library and it's sort of, uh, yeah, it fits well. So it actually happens surprisingly often. And that's one of the things I really like about Mongoose is that like, Pretty much anybody can really come in and contribute, and I very rarely just find a reason to turn someone down. And most PRs actually end up being pretty high quality. I, I actually have a question for you, Larry. Um, one thing I noticed about you is that you're extremely pr productive in your life. Like you're, I saw a startup launch, Outlearn, and you're like one of the people on like the site as oh, yeah. a curator of content. So, what do you find time to maybe the strat? What are your strategy and tactics for getting so much stuff done in the coding? world beyond just your job oh that's kind of uh, that's kind of a fun question but um, one of the things that I actually learned over the last couple of years is or my favorite little productivity hack is just sit down uh, at the start of the week write down like five things that I want to get done over the course of the week in just a notebook that I have actually lying somewhere over there I could show at some point but well, whatever so that notebook has uh, has basically like you know for each week, five items that I really want to get done, and these are like the five things that I can't live without getting done this week. 
um, and generally just plan out each hour of each day what I'm working on on in that hour and sort of allocate maybe like, you know, give myself some hours or two every once in a while for a break, but mostly just say like, okay, this hour I am working on this thing and by God, I'm gonna be working on it and I'm gonna get it done. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, well, I'm just gonna find some more time later in the week to get it done. So yeah, like prioritize and also becomes a lot harder to, you know, like slack off and start like reading Twitter for five hours when, uh, when you've actually like written down like, okay, I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be doing this thing at this hour and yeah, just a little bit of extra commitment in that regard. Um, also related to that, oh yeah, Bulletproof Coffee, greatest thing ever. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so you're, you're a butter and your coffee kind of guy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. Um, questions, Gabe? Uh, yeah, would you ever so the question is, would you ever allow oh, okay. Mongoose users to replace mpromise, is that what it's using, with their own promise library? It's already done. 4.1.0 was released about three months ago, give or take, and it supports that. So you can plug in whichever ES6 compatible promise library you want. So you can plug in Bluebird, Q, um, and uh, native promises. Um, you should be able to plug in RSVP and when and all of those other weird things that you might want to use, but I never actually have bothered. Um, but yeah, you can, and I, I will be the first to admit that mpromise was not a good idea. It was written in like 2012. ES6 was very far away. Promises A plus was the only game in town. And then ES6 promises became like really, really popular and dominant like early 2014 or something like that, maybe late 2013. It was right around like the peak of the adoption curve. And now nobody cares about promises A plus to the point where actually subtly speaking, Bluebird does not, is not conformant with promises A plus, which really boggles my mind. But anyway, so you can plug in whichever promises library you want, so you can use .catch. And also, it's not my fault that mpromise doesn't have .catch. I actually still have a pull request open for that, so and for mpromise. <laughs> so go and nag Raphael Ackerman to merge that. But I mean, his comment was like, I want more tests. And I say, well, uh, I, I have 100% test coverage. There's no real logic there. And .catch is just a is syntactic sugar for dot .then null function. And I don't know how much more I could test that. So, but uh, at the same time, Mongoose 4.1, we now support, uh, you can plug in whichever promises library you want. And actually, uh, recently we actually formally deprecated mpromise support entirely. So, uh, so like 5.0, you won't even be allowed to use mpromise, let alone have it in there. So yeah, that's, uh, so now it's not a priority for me. Uh, if he wants to merge it, he can but he doesn't want to for some reason. I don't, I don't really know. And then, uh, going back to the pull request comment, like a um, little dirty secret, oftentimes the uh, module requester asking for more tests is often code for, I don't feel like merging this. It takes too much effort to merge and deploy it. So, uh, so I suspect that that is actually the case because I don't know how much more I could test the .catch implementation. Um, but except for when I do it, usually when I ask for tests, it's usually like real. <laughs> James. Question yes. is, are there any plans to improve the mongoose documentation? Burn. Yes, the uh, the API docs have uh, have are difficult to understand. I've I. Struggle to understand them myself sometimes, um, but that's kind of the tricky bit. Is if I don't understand the documentation, I can't really fix it too much. Uh, no, but <laughs> oh, but no, we're, uh, there's a few things coming down the pipe with uh, sort of more of a focus on the guide style of documentation, and then also like my my dream is to sort of have the API docs feel a lot more like the Express API docs, which are actually good. And the mongoose ones, which are and the mongoose ones, which are kind of difficult to understand because they don't really show how you would actually use this thing. They just sort of show like all of the internal implementation details, which isn't really great. Um, yeah. So, well, long story short, uh, right now focusing more on guides and sort of like having a test-driven development approach to building new guides and um, and sort of figuring out a way to make the uh, to make the API docs more like um, 
or more like Express, so it actually sort of reflects like the publicly accessible parts of the API and how you can actually use it, as opposed to sort of exposing all of the internal implementation details of how like a schema type number works. Wait, so what was the question about NoSQL? Okay. Which of you to use not like a NoSQL database versus traditional like relational database? Um, personally, number one thing, uh, again, I, I can't speak for MongoDB as a company. This is all entirely my opinion. My number one thing was that um, do, do, oh, I did it like all of the setup and management and clunk that came up with trying to like set up a uh, traditional RDBMS. Whenever I'd have to set up my SQL, it's like, okay, now you install my SQL, you install PHP MyAdmin, you start PHP MyAdmin, PHP MyAdmin doesn't work, so you gotta go figure out why, and then you have to dig into how sudo apt get works, and oh, well, by the way, I have to install this other thing, and now I can finally log in. Now I have to set a username and password, and I'll create a new table, and MongoDB kind of like got rid of all that nastiness and it was just like I start a process and it has and gives me the ability to just store some data and then load it back and that was just like really satisfying. That was also like actually long weird story before I started with MongoDB I actually tried to do CouchDB for a little bit and uh, after an hour I couldn't figure out how to query anything. So I figured well uh, let me give this MongoDB thing a shot maybe that's better. And then you know within like 10 seconds I could actually store and load data and now I'm like okay now that's, uh, now that's the kind of database I want to use. It just like lets me store stuff and query it back and not really worry too much about you know all of the, uh, all of the operational setup necessary because for a development environment like I don't want to deal with ops. I just want to just make me start up a process, that's fine. I'll, uh, I'll deal with that. But when I have to go set up like an ops tool like PHP MyAdmin, that's just too much work. Hey, Larry, I have a question. A lot of our um, students com you know, don't have a traditional computer science, especially a theoretical computer science degree. Um, do you often find yourself using things from your computer science degree? Or is it, um, or, or, and if you do, what are the things in computer science that you think you use on a day-to-day like, -day basis? Oh well, number one thing, being comfortable with trees. Um, you, uh, if y'all, did y'all see the tweet by the uh, the homebrew guy who uh, who was complaining about Google? Um, let's face, he was complaining about uh, Google not giving him a job because he uh, because he couldn't figure out how to uh, reverse a binary tree in, during his interview. Um, well, actually. Uh, I would have to very much disagree with him, and that also kind of explains why Homebrew is such a bad piece of software. Um, <laughs> uh, is like, dealing with trees are just such a fundamental part of computer science that like you should really know how to uh, how to interact with trees well. And actually, when it like pretty much. Every time I develop something new in Mongoose, it almost always comes back to trees because documents are trees, schemas are trees, everything is a tree. And then all of a sudden I have, and you're telling me you can't reverse a binary tree in 20 minutes on the blackboard. That's a little bit of a problem. But on the other hand, that's like, that's also kind of like introductory algorithms. There's actually very little information from like the theoretical computer science courses that I took that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I, when I was in trading, I always hoped that someday I would have the opportunity to implement a type 2 rank pairing heap. Um, but th sadly, that day never came. So, <laughs> and uh, let's see. So, where was I trying to go with that? Oh, yeah. Well, the number one thing that I got out of that, though, or thing that really, like, meant something was the was the confidence and ability to sort of take on a hard problem and say like, oh, I have, uh, when I come across a difficult issue, I have the confidence to say, okay, I have, uh, I have solved hard issues in the past. I can, uh, I can overcome this one too. All I need to do is just like be patient, hammer my head against it. Like if I could, uh, if I could do all of those graph theory proofs on Mondays when I was hung over back in college, I could, uh, I could probably figure out a way to, uh, to you know, figure out how to like you know, refactor this so I can make this feature work or something like that. That's probably the most important thing. All right, we have time for one more question. Anyone want to be the Akash?
the question is, is as a maintainer of open source project, is there something that you appreciate when people do or something that you find annoying when people do uh, to contribute to the project? Um, appreciate contributing, putting in a pull request is of course number one. Um, beyond that, uh, generally the the type, the things that I find most annoying are when people say it doesn't work. Um, it that doesn't really provide me much context. Like people often just open up bug reports and don't even provide anything resembling sample code that sort of like gives me even a general idea of what they're trying to do. They're saying like, oh, okay, my query doesn't work. It's like, okay, what is your what does your query look like? What's your schema? What is the data like in the database? There's a lot of things that could go wrong. Um, Based on our tests, queries work it, to some extent. Um, so, <laughs> so in theory, it should work. But I mean, like, I can't really tell you more than that, other than, until you actually show me like how something works. Um, so that would be like that would be my number one uh, thing is like provide additional context on like what's uh, what's wrong if possible. The best the best bug reports, the ones that I love the most, are the ones where somebody just like paste me a script that I can just run by itself and, set, and reproduces that issue and says like, okay, like, oh, this script is broken. Okay, now I can actually dig into the code, figure out what's wrong. That makes, uh, that makes life a lot easier. So yeah, ad additional context. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's probably number one. All right, thank you so much, Blair. It was great. Oh, thank you guys very much. All right, why don't we take a uh, break? So like